there was a famous song of Lionel Richie saying all night long. Today, now, we're here to say all day pitches. Are you ready to discover the latest technology innovation in the travel industry? This is Enzo Aita, and I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the first episode of the Hospitality Marketplace, Just Pitch It. I'll see you in a few seconds. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my colleagues, Diego, Federica, Cristina. How are you guys? Hi, uh, good. Really good. Really excited. Oh, great. And so, how is everyone feeling? I'm so excited. We have a lot of stuff today to, to share with the audience. But before we start, let me share quickly my screen because I, the, I have good news. So if you are Spanish, French or Italian and you are watching right now, you can uh, easily download a, a Chrome extension and you can uh, select your preferred languages and watch the event, which will be held in English, also with uh, your dedicated uh, subtitle. I'll share my screen and I'll show you how that works. So basically, this is a video tutorial. There is no audio, but just follow what the uh, instruction is showing. So go to your Google Chrome. Um, go or microphone age, so depending on the browser you are using, search for a CADU um, extension, get this done, then uh, open it, insert the key um, codes of the event, which is, let me see and remember, GPNX. Done. So basically, after that, you can select your language easily. And at some point, there is a little uh, pop-up coming on the on the, on your screen that will allow you to watch practically the event and get the subtitle. All right. So, how are you guys, Federica? Fantastic. Uh, hi, Enzo, and hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm here sitting from Rome, and uh, I'm really, really excited uh, to kick off today with the second edition of Hospitality Marketplace. The first one was incredible for me. And we have been working to this event uh, for seven long months. Uh, I have to say that I'm really proud and uh, honored of uh, the lineup that we gathered. And uh, yeah, so please follow, join us uh, and uh, comment in the, in the comments in LinkedIn. Uh, join also YouTube. We are on every social media. So don't hesitate uh, to, do not hesitate to tell us, uh, you know, your feedbacks, uh, your questions. Uh, we, yeah, we are here excited. Fantastic. You want to share quickly the agenda? I'll, I'll open the screen here. Sure. As you know, today we will kick off with uh, the day dedicated to revenue maximization. Tomorrow, let's connect again for the second topic, which will be distribution. Then next uh, uh, week, we will be we will go live on the 22nd of November, Tuesday, for the direct bookings uh, event. And uh, we will uh, just close with the uh, last topic, which will be operations and sustainability on Wednesday, 23rd of November. Fantastico, fantastico. Cristina, this is your uh, hospitality marketplace experience. How far? <laughs> it's, it's my first experience, and so but I'm super delighted to have joined uh, such great and fun professionals really putting together this great event. And I think it's, it's a huge opportunity uh, to bring together some of the most fascinating commercial minds together with the, the latest tech innovation. So super excited. Thanks very much for the opportunity, and thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Fantastic. Diego, what's up to you? Where are, first of all, where are you sitting? Because every time you are in a different part of the world, from Brazil to Jamaica to yeah. Santo Domingo, Ibiza, you, you do a very bad life, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, right now in Madrid, in a headquarters here in, in Pozuelo. So I have been at least this during the last week in, in Madrid. So no, no airplanes, no travel during the last two weeks. So I'm here in Madrid. 
First of all, I would like to thank, like always, because for me it's a huge privilege to to be here with all of you guys. It's an incredible experience to work with you. It's amazing. And I would like personally thanks uh, Enzo, you all the all your job that we, we, you have done in the hospitality marketplace, Federica, Cristina, Chris, Jen, uh, for bringing back this event. Uh, this is an incredible experience for me. It's a, a huge, a huge thanks for everyone. Uh, Hospitality Marketplace was born with one idea that is democratize the use of the technology, helping hoteliers uh, meeting in a simple and an easy way the technological provider, which normally is complicated to do. So I think that it, you, you will enjoy the, the day and, and the full event because you, you will have um, in a simple and easy way all the best technology ecosystem in, in the world right now for the hospitality industry. So really happy to be here like always. All right, this point we are almost starting. Um, maybe Christina, you want to say something about what, which are going to be the sponsor today? Shall we show the clip? Let's bring up our sponsors, absolutely. So lots, lots of stuff, right? Very varied and very focused on how hotels can really cope with the, uh, the latest challenges, particularly inflation and everything else is driving prices upwards. Demand is, is sustained. I think we've got, we're really uh, going to enjoy some of the latest technology we're going to be looking at today. And thank you very much to all our sponsors for the confidence and for being with us today and giving us a, a glimpse in some of their latest, latest features and um, opportunities. Um, so thank you so much. Um, Diego, over to you to give us a glimpse of the judges. Yeah, um, this event would not be possible with our judges. I think that we have gathered one of the best uh, group of, of professionals in the world during these four days, all seniors and C-level positions in the revenue management and sales perspective. And today we will be very fast. Uh, is Christopher Cooper, which is CEO of uh, Christopher Cooper Consults. Danny Carray, which is vice president of Total Revenue at Atlantis Resort Dubai, which is one of the most Stunning properties I in the world. In the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, an incredible hotel. Uh, Daniel Frey, which is vice president of revenue management and H uh, hotels, which is uh, one of the largest operators in in Germany. Uh, my friend Par Augustin, which is vice president of total profit at Nordic Hotels, uh, which operates more than two hundred hotels uh, worldwide. Sumi Khan, which is director of business intelligence analytics at Accor, one of the biggest companies in, in the world. And last but not least, Rostan eh, Monji, which is group revenue distribution manager. If I'm not wrong, he has been promoted eh, really eh, soon to be head of uh, sales for that company. So as you see, we have a great panelist today in the show with uh, judges. Let's look at the Let's clip and then we yeah. can uh, welcome them. And uh, I will be mainly uh, on the backstage. So guys, make sure that everything is going to be really smooth. So let's look at the clip. Hi, everyone. Diego, words to you. Sorry? You can introduce them. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, uh, as I said, uh, we have Christopher uh, Cooper, which is uh, Chief Commercial Officer at Christopher Cooper Consultants. Hi, Chris. A pleasure to, 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 to be here with you. Uh, Daniel Caray, Vice President of Total Revenue of uh, Atlantic Resort. Um, as I said, one of the biggest, one of the most incredible hotels in the world right now. Uh, Daniel Frey, um, Vice President Revenue Management and H Hotel. Uh, Par, uh, good friend, VP uh, Total Profit at Nordic uh, Choi Hotels. Uh, Sumi, nice to see you. And nice to meet you. Director of Business Insights and Analytics at the core. And Roxanne, congratulations for your new position. Uh, you go to revenue from, from revenue to sales. So, uh, congratulations for that. It's a huge privilege to have you on board. So, uh, we will we will have a lot of fun today. 
Okay, so at this point, guys, again, I showed the message from uh, Sara. Hi, Sara, thanks again for uh, giving us the opportunity uh, to, to offer the opportunity to the audience to follow the event in uh, different languages. So it's very easy. Just download the extension from Akadu, um, extension.akadu.com, and then follow the instruction. Then at some point, you can insert the room ID GPNX, and then you can select your preferred languages. So, are we ready to start, guys? Federica and Cristina? We surely are. We are very ready. Okay, so uh, just to make sure that uh, all are aware, so basically we have for each company five minutes elevator pitch. At the end of the elevator pitch, all our great hoteliers here, they will make some questions, trying to put them in a comfortable zone and, uh, and ensure they can uh, uh, share as much as possible about their solution. So looking forward to the agenda, guys, and I'll see you later. I will put myself on the background and let's look at the first clip and introduce the first pitch. Hi, Lana. Hi. Welcome here. We're very happy to have you. So hello. hello. Welcome, welcome. So we are very excited to start with you. And uh, somebody could think, but uh, HKeeper isn't it a tool for task management and housekeeping? But uh, indeed, uh, it has uh, uh, there, there is a uh, uh, you know a meaning, and there is a reason why you are you are here. I don't want to say nothing. I leave you space now and time to pitch. So just uh, share your screen, please, and uh, the yeah the the platform is yours. Can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello from Boston. Uh, and I'm happy to be here. And uh, as Federica mentioned, probably you were not expecting to see task management software on the revenue day, revenue maximization day. But we have a very close relationship which you, uh, with you. And I'm sure uh, my presentation will explain that. So let's start. While the revenue manager juggles budget, a marketing director does a trick, TripAdvisor press all of us, and the owner of the hotel still believes in magic, HKeeper is one of the right tools which can increase profit and positive guest review, which is undivisible and cannot be separated uh, in the hospitality revenue management. So let's start with the uh, online reputation like uh, guest reviews, which is in fact from the uh, forms the demand for the service. And my question is, what do you have guys to maintain your standards and quality services? This journey starts from the front desk and we all know that, which is equipped with a great tool. This can book, pay, check in, check out online. And so guests get a great experience at the very beginning. And let's open the curtain and see what happening next during their stay. Due to the outdated communication method and task assignment, front and back office perform at completely different speed, and that decreases the chances of meeting your guest expectation. And especially today when the hotel ADRs increase because of inflation, which means guests are paying more than ever for the hotel stay, and it makes, it makes sense that they expect more and better services, yeah? So here what uh, <clears throat> I want to emphasize that uh, the need to change the manual and verbal task assignment is not about the hotel staff. It's about your guests because the time spent processing guest request manually is the amount of time you delay for the requested service. So let's say guests ask for the, an extra towel or pillow. At least three departments are involved in uh, this process. Front desk attendant, dispatcher, runner, and etc. So they spend at least three minutes of passing information before the runner even start to uh, start his task and uh, takes pillow or towels to the room. In other words, you delay service, you pay for this delay, and get an unhappy guest. Why? And what you see here is the crazy amount of labor hours spent on manual assignment by three departments for 100 hotel rooms in a year. Just for you to know, each keeper for 120 rooms costs only 600 per month. So do your math and, to fi and find out uh, the return of investment. Here it's 1 to 22. 
When you switch to the age keeper, your entire team and your guests will drive together at the same speed without any delay. Going digital keeps each working unit updated in real time. No lost or forgotten task. No, <clears throat> no uh, lowering your quality. The uh, digital checklist to ensure quality uh, will be offered as well. Simple pictogram language, manual uh, multilingual messenger is also um, for your disposal. Managers get automatic and uh, real-time generated reports and much, much more. And this is my favorite part, our unique after assignment feature. And uh, HKeeper not only brings entire team together, but your guests start also working with your team. And I hope I make you curious. Imagine this, guest by uh, scanning a simple QR code gets to a digital menu, choose what he wants, and from the moment uh, guest clicks the button place an order, he's a trick. Guest actually ask and kind of trigger each keeper to create a task and each keeper then assign it automatically directly to a specific performer as your dispatcher or front office can do. Then if something is not working in the room, Again, the same scenario, like AC is not cooling, let's say. He is again, guest use our application and in the same way, send request, which will be received by maintenance with a high priority notification. So just to make it simple to understand how HKeeper works, we bring a sample of um, Uber. Yeah, and we all know that uh, how Uber changed the taxi service industry. HKeeper did the same. We eliminate the need to call and wait until the dispatcher plays the order. HKeeper connects directly guest with the doer and eliminates delay. For the first time in hospitality industry, guest pay you, work with your team, and help to increase the quality of your hotel service. Is it not a magic? But besides providing you with a great tool to control the quality of the service, HKeeper also cut the cost of operational expenses just by automatically assigning tasks and eliminating the need to, uh, for room inspection, HKeeper reduces the cost of the preparing a room for sale up to 30%. My team and I are very proud to offer to the hoteliers and vacation rental providers a software that increase profit and quality of the service, reduce dramatically time for the guest request performance, automatic escalation eliminate human errors and daily work in daily work, which reduces the amount of paid com compensation for the guest. The reduce uh, of the cost for the complimentary service, which is free of charge. HKeeper does a great job in maximizing labor productivity and creates a great environment for the entire team. If you want to, be, uh, to have a happy guest, great reputation, and growing profits, then you must have HKeeper. And please get in touch with us to see HKeeper's magic tools can, which can maximize your revenue and enhance your guest experience. And remember, behind every great hotel team, there is a great software. Thank you. Hello? I was on mute. Can <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Thank you, Lana. Now it makes really sense why you are here. So, uh, I know uh, here we have great judges, and uh, I would like uh, one of them to, to ask a question. So, I don't know, maybe Christopher Cooper, do you have any question for uh, Lana? Yes, certainly. Hi, Lana. Great presentation. Well done. Thank um, you. Just curious. I presume I've got a couple of notes, actually. Virtual concierge, I presume that goes straight to housekeeping rather than or straight to maintenance. Yeah. Virtual concierge is just an expression for it. Um, if the guest has a problem and it goes directly to the housekeeping staff or to maintenance, how do guest relations get hold of that information? How does what? How does how does guest relations get that information? Say so they've got a complaint about heating, or they've got missing light bulbs, or something like that, which yeah. your your automated service will deal with. So there still uh, has to be some manual intervention between guest relations, especially in a high quality hotel as such. Does that uh, make you sense? Know, I uh, yeah, I I got it. So uh, basically, you. Uh, uh, when we set the program, we uh, have a, 
special steps which we have to set it up. So guest, uh, basically, he will not have any uh, needs to uh, kind of... Uh, how to explain? So guests basically use a chat or set it menu where uh, he can choose what he wants to have it. And then based on the logic which we create behind each request, then this request follows. And when we are talking about uh, any request, if you know to whom it should reach, then uh, system HKeeper knows to whom to assign. I don't know if I answer your question. It's just a communication to the guest on departure. So just checking everything was resolved, etc. I think it's a great service to deliver the service. But if the problem is a problem, how is that communicated to, uh, let's say, as I said at the beginning, the guest relation to you? Yeah, we because we provide, a, we provide it with all reports and also guest has an option to evaluate. He can leave his feedback within the H keeper. So then manager sees the uh, quality, like uh, we have a five star, let's say, they select and they um, evaluate service. And also I guess they can leave a comment within the uh, application, within the uh, our concierge. So before this review goes to the trip advisor, let's say, manager or who or tracks the uh, feedbacks through the our uh, dashboard here, yeah? they can see uh, if guest was happy, guest was not happy. So it's kind of, one step before they go to the uh, social um, uh, platform to leave their feedbacks. So we kind of give them step which they uh, can give you feedback and after you can communicate first before guests leave the hotel. So that is uh, really helpful uh, in this case, yeah? So it doesn't go two, kind of, yeah. Two very last Thanks. quick comments. Um, can you deal with chargeable services? Um, uh, we can integrate with your payment system, but usually it goes to the folio and goes to the, if let's say it's a restaurant, so they charge directly. It depends how the, you structure it, your payment system. Uh, or basically when they bring in, well, let's say food to the room, yes, yeah, they have a check which guest has to sign anyway. So then if you add to the folio, but if you want to add a uh, direct payment to our application, it's also possible, we can integrate. Perfect. And my last question Great. is just, uh, little... Christopher, we uh, we are running run of time, so we don't have time okay. to for the next. But you can uh, always yeah. connect me, so I will answer all my questions. You have my phone. Thank you. And you can also yeah. write it in the comments so that Lana can also um, reply do. there publicly. Uh, since we want to make a second question from another judges, um, yeah, there is somebody who would like to ask a question. Roxana, maybe. Yes, Stefan. Hi, can you hear me? Lana, yeah? just Lana. Yeah. Lana. Make good. Sure um, yeah. So the, as, as this application is guest facing and the guests will be using that to uh, through their requests, is it possible to customize the application to mirror your brand or the hotel's yes. brand? We do that already. Yeah. We can provide you our like a template <laughs> and you just put it your uh, branded uh, pictures and everything. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yes, so unfortunately, I... we went we went a little bit longer with uh, the first question, but uh, yeah, Lana, please conclude. Yeah, I have an announcement okay. if you uh, may uh, allow me. So we sure. offer a special, we have a special offer for everybody who participate in Revenue Maximization Day. And uh, we, uh, we are happy to announce that we can provide you with a free audit for your workload. Uh, we can analyze and tell you how each keeper can help if you would like to proceed. But anyway, there are no obligations. So please feel free to contact me uh, by scanning QR code and scheduling demo. And you have to put magic words, uh, revenue maximization. Yes, yeah, so we know that you came from this program and that offer will be working until December 31st. Please take advantage to have a free audit, as I said, of your workload so you understand what you can change to be more efficient. And also I want to announce that in uh, 2023, we will be providing with a third version of HKeeper where you will have more automation, where you will have more chances to increase your uh, quality of your services. And uh, I hope uh, you will like it, what we offer next year. That is my announcement, announcement and thank you.
Thank you, Lana. That was fantastic. And of course, you can always contact Lana through LinkedIn also. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, the time is really uh, short. Thank you. So thank you. And uh, now we go to the next uh, pitch. So let's, uh, let's see the clip. Okay, well, uh, welcome on board, um, Ideas and Mike Tuma. Um, I think uh, next we, we're going to be uh, looking at one of the most established and recognized technology in the space of revenue management. Um, so thank you very much for joining us here. Um, Mike, can you hear us okay? I can, I can. Thank you for having me, and I really appreciate uh, having the opportunity to speak to you all. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things that we want to talk about today is pricing power. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully I don't uh, get this too, uh, too mixed up. So is everyone able to see? Oh, there we go. Look at that. Um, so I, I got to say, I do like this StreamYard item, but I, it, by a show of hands, a show of thumbs up, how is everyone today? Good. All right. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Okay. So got five minutes here. Uh, I hope to be able to run through this quickly so we can get into some uh, some questions from the esteemed panelists here. But, you know, one of the things that we've continued to hear over the last quarter and even throughout the pandemic is unleashing this pricing power. We've seen a very, very strong uh, movement in the marketplace uh, in, in, in holding off some of the the recessionary pressures, but continuing through and hoteliers, in my opinion, have more confidence today than ever because of their ability for pricing power. But, you know, the thing that we really need to look through is, is I want to talk a little bit about the, the evolution of that pricing power. And so dynamic pricing evolution, if you think over the last 10 to 15 years in the hospitality industry, we've seen great leaps made in how hotels price their rooms. First, with the general idea of dynamic pricing to, to broad acceptance of rates floating within the best available rates uh, starting back in 2008. Um, since then, the industry has continued its evolution and many of us uh, got away from fixed bar levels and finally moving on to the spectrum of prices between a minimum and a maximum by room type. At Ideas, we call this continuous pricing. It allows hoteliers to optimally price each room type without rounding rules or with rounding rules, if you prefer, and, and based upon unique demand pattern of that room type. And other reactive systems use methods like offsets to room price types. And this of course leaves money on the table. And as you've seen over the last uh, quarters with these earnings calls, there's a lot of money to be able to, to, to go get if you can treat your pricing power correctly. Uh, and you have to maximize that uh, revenue uh, for each room type based upon that demand. Now, pricing on the spectrum was a big step forward. However, we still see this as a very, very rigid environment where lots of things are derived from best flexible rate or bar. As you can see in this picture, the picture you see gets away gets way more complicated. And imagine you're at a part hotel or a long stay property, and now you've got a tangled web of rate plans and products by length of stay with all these linked products. And depending upon what you're trying to sell, you know that that can be very cumbersome. But we're not create. We don't want to create a situation with a lot of compromise. So, you have a lever to pull in this situation, and that's this big blue box up here, that best flexible rate. And that means that I, as a hotelier, have to balance getting the price correct for the best flexible rate with that demand for all those linked products with various fixed or slightly dynamic rules. In many cases, the RMS pricing or setup the hotel is using, they use those fixed offset rules that react retrospectively, so in the past, to what happens in the market. And in that cascading effect, any increase or decrease in price points for other rate plans choking off those demand can limit your revenue potential. Now, what if I told you you didn't need to make this compromise? that it's constraining your revenue and there's a better way to price that allows you to free your property from these fixed values. So for product pricing, we look at it from a, free, uh, a few key areas. So first, you must automate how the, you price the differences between the products or rate plans and to break some of those fixed pricing rules with optimized pricing that we can capture more incremental revenue and improve the performance. So if you think about what that is, that guests are trying to book, if the best flexible rate is not one of your most booked rate plans, should its demand patterns be driving the price for your other rate plans? No, of course not. But be sure 
the rate plans and the room types that are booked most often or have the greatest revenue opportunity are the ones that are you are most confident of optimally pricing your own uh, on their own demand patterns. Now, as an industry, we should be thinking about driving the price based upon the product that people are actually buying from us. And anywhere you can get started to flex that discount, you can grow incremental revenue by being very cautious about the way that you can achieve that. So we should start to think about creatively, uh, think creatively about how we craft the rules or the structures of the pricing for these products, depending upon the demand. Now, this opens the door in hospitality for us to start pricing these products optimally, but it also creates something that revenue management was founded upon, and that is starting to micro-segment pieces of demand to better target those clients. Now, that requires yet another evolution, one that we've cracked. And that evolution is not just to say you think about pricing those products properly, but fencing them appropriately, and then targeting what you know about the demand for those products and this is where we have to start thinking about some of these key principles. So a pricing strategy is, that is going to thrive in today's world requires you not only to break the fixed rules, not only to grow the revenue by fencing those products better, but to start thinking about how those products themselves respond to changes in price independently to the best flexible rate. And while doing so in an automated fashion, that's how we can truly learn about the demand for those different products. It's also important that we can start to micro-target guests based upon the things that we know. Now, if you have guests that never buy the flexible rate, you don't always show them that product first on your website. Why don't you show them products that are likely to be purchased first based on what you know about them? And that comes back to leveraging the data that you know from that loyalty perspective. So in this new approach, we are moving towards minimum and maximum pricing by room type and key rate plans, and being flexible about those gaps, moving away from those fixed rules that say the price should always be a percentage of, or I've sold X number of rooms, and so I'm going to apply some business rule against that discount. And hoteliers, we've allowed them to move away from these fixed pricing rules and to implement more flexible, tailored pricing strategies that proactively respond to that market's focus, to your market's focus. So that micro-targeting your business using the technology and what you know about the guest and the demand for each room type uh, can help us product uh, can help us maximize that product and that total guest spend at your property. Now, finally, if you think about how you're going to do that, I want to highlight uh, what we think is a really good opportunity in the industry that we can provide, especially given that there's so much leisure demand and corporate demand is starting to return faster than expected. And with some of the undulations in uh, our, our macroeconomic environment, at Ideas, we provide this unique automation and that revenue optimal rates tailored for your guests driven by your commercial strategy goals using that, mar that micro-targeting and that micro-segmentation. Quite simply, you're able to find the right product for the right guest at the right time and then be able to rebalance your capabilities of what to show them based upon what you think that they're going to book. Now, considering the strategy, guest behavior, market context, your room types and key products, they're uniquely priced to, to maximize that revenue and grow and share and enhance that booking experience. And you're in control with a flexible demand-based approach that allows you to interact and affect your pricing strategy as needed. And by doing all these things, we've seen an incredible amount of pricing power be pushed out into the industry that allows for your organization to continue on to pro provide the best product at the right price at the right profitability. So I'm going to stop and hopefully take some questions because uh, that was that was rap rapid fire TED talk style. <laughs> Don't hesitate to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn or mail me directly, but grill me. Let's go. Well done, Mike. Well, let's take some questions from our judges. Who may go first? Uh, Daniel, I would like to go first. A question from you. Hi, yeah, Mike. Daniela, uh, before, Daniela, sorry, before making the question, just would like to say that unfortunately we can give you only one question each because otherwise we don't have enough space for everybody. So sorry about that. I know that you are full of questions, but you can always contact uh, all our speakers. So sorry, Daniela, just go ahead. Okay, thanks for reminding me because I already prepared a long list. Anyhow, so Mike, I will connect with you separately. 
um, I, so this topic is uh, is really thrilling. So um, this is already available in Ideas in the latest version. It is. Okay. So um, my question is: uh, Historically, I've been always working in resorts, mm -hmm. and uh, the biggest challenge of 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 my life has been really. Um, having uh, the revenue management system work with me, uh, but I also need to look after 50% of the business, which is trade and static rates. So how would you um, recommend to, to, to utilize this setup, knowing that uh, there, is, uh, there is a static rates out there and uh, uh, together with that, uh, a ton of complaints on a daily basis of undercutting and uh, and and so on. So, how 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 would you suggest doing that? Well, your your static rates are oftentimes going to be negotiated, as my assumption here, right? So you're going to need to move those through so you can get that inventory squared away. But what we typically like to to look at is of the of the other business that is that is yieldable beyond some of those other aspects is that. Um, for resorts, oftentimes we have conversations around the revenue per occupant. Uh, so you're looking at the total profitability of the guest and you're able to you know, look at that per person pricing and you can deliver, the, deliver that revenue, excuse, excuse me, deliver that price to maximize that revenue uh, per, occupants, per occupant. Uh, and based upon that, you can take a look at the profitability of the entirety of what the guest is doing and that rate. If it's an all-inclusive uh, rate and resort, um, what we look to do is 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 first understand the the non uh, the non contract business, uh, and then start to yield that. Um, you will get some you know some complaints, but you can also look at the group modules, and we have the ability to go back and and look at those group modules um, and determine whether or not we should be able to you know go through and, and identify an increase or a decrease of those static rates. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll stop with the questions, otherwise we're going to be here the whole night. So thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. And, you know, if I didn't give you a, a complete enough answer, I have a whole bastion of, uh, of colleagues that can get into some very detailed questions for you, Daniela. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure they can. Well, thanks very much, Daniel. Shumi, any questions from your side? Oh, I think you're mute. Sorry about that. Hi. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hi, Shumi. How are you? Uh, good. I've got one specific question and it's around uh, potential cannibalization. So obviously now that you're yielding all of those rates independently, I did see a little screen that showed that you could fence them. But is it up to the revenue manager to fence them or is there some automatic fencing that takes place to ensure that there's no cannibalization between those rates? Well, so the, the answer in, in truly is, is both. Uh, so we, we do, our system does allow for the, uh, through the configurations uh, that the revenue management team and the hotel provides to influence that system. Now, it, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be ideas without talking about the way that you can do that in an automated, automated and optimized way. So the, that fencing, one of the things that we built in is, is for those linked rates, you can fence those rates off so you can ensure that you can close them down and they don't operate within some, within the parameters and cannibalize. But if there's some uniqueness of what the revenue manager knows versus what the system knows, then the, the revenue manager does have the ability to go through and override some of those aspects or change some of the configurations. Okay. I do have another question, but I know we're out of time, so I'll ask you another time. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Tejas can also help you out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Federica is, is keeping our time here. Federica, how are we doing for another question? If it's short and uh, we stay in one minute, let's go. Less than let's one go. minute, please. Let's go. Let's go. I'll try to make it quick. Question. Like shooting. Oh, I don't um, know if this one's going to be a, a quick one. <laughs> um, how does this differ to what some of your competitors are already doing um, in the market? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I believe that was Roxanne. Yes. Yeah, thanks for asking the question. So th there's there's a major difference. Um, and so our, do our competitors have the ability to publish rates and, and go out and and um, and to be able to isolate some of those rates on a per segment basis? The answer is yes. But what what we end up doing is that we actually that's retroactive. That is taking into consideration the rates 
uh, and it gets rolled into post, excuse me, post optimization to where we're actually doing this in a proactive way. So the system's continuing to look at um, at the uptake and the booking pace of these particular rates, and it's automatically responding moving in, in a forward forward moving fashion into the future booking pace and the optimizations. So in re, you know, so I guess the the biggest difference is that our system is always, always, always re-optimizing for the future and um, and not necessarily reacting to what is booked. Um, we actually bring in a concept of booked versus stayed, uh, which gives more intelligence around the the actuality of, of how you're bringing in those rates and the materialization of, of, the, uh, of the booking pace against those rates. Thank you, Mike, for being really, really short. So yeah, Christina and myself wants to thank you for uh, participating for this uh, great uh, Pitch and Q and A, and now we have to go to the to the next one. So let's have a look at the clip. Thank you all. Welcome, Alex. Uh, such a great pleasure to have you here. I can see you have a very nice X behind you. I know you have uh, some news. Uh, to all of us. So uh, how are you, first of, first of all? Very good. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Hi, can you hear me? Very well, perfectly. So Fantastic. I want to leave the word to you, not steal your time. You have a lot to say. So just uh, your, your pitch can start. Brilliant. So uh, I would like to take this time to actually uh, not talk about the features and functions we have at Beyond Price. Uh, we have actually uh, developed a lot in the last uh, uh, couple of years. We've got uh, a product that uh, is on par with uh, all the major players in the market. But what I would like to talk about today is a little about where we're going with Beyond Price. So we are just about to launch our new brand uh, on the 24th. So uh, stay tuned and you get to know what we're doing. Uh, and uh, I wanted to show with you uh, as well a bit of our vision, where we're going. So we're actually going from... Uh, uh, looking at revenue management and, and the room revenues and really trying to go and uh, take hotels to look at it uh, from a holistic standpoint. So we've got a few mandates within Beyond Price, which is uh, literally um, working on the holistic profitability transformation, really empowering uh, sustainable profitability with hotels. Uh, there's a massive uh, undertake in, in paving the way from uh, revenue management to profit management which some organizations uh, have, have started taking that path, but uh, I guess the industry hasn't really gone there yet. And of course, uh, uh, how can we actually find profits within the books that a hotel has and take it to the uh, bottom line? So uh, our mission uh, uh, of, of our new uh, uh, path is really to empower customers with really uh, uh, data transparency to make better decisions in a more sustainable and profitable way to really uh, uh, work, work towards uh, a sustainable, profitable future. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the profitable uh, sustainability or sustainable profitability, we're really thinking of how can we help hotels to really take, make the most of the resources that you have uh, at the property and really uh, highlight how uh, sustainability is really intertwined with profitability. So uh, thinking about the platform uh, itself, so we are still uh, obviously in a revenue management platform with uh, uh, as all hotels have a lot of disconnected points. Uh, everybody was trying to consolidate, centralize, simplify, and automate decisions on pricing. And the result of a lot of that, the hotels that are uh, still trying to make the leap to use revenue management systems is obviously uh, uh, lost in profitability. Uh, now, during the pandemic, we've got some interesting lessons that we, we actually take uh, forward. So we are actually going, I mean, if you think about the this, the way we think of uh, uh, revenue management, and you know, Mike was just mentioning uh, revenue per available guest or per occupant, and that's where I think we we are going. Uh, resorts uh, uh, have been doing this for quite a long time versus city hotels, and uh, I think that the post pandemic has really shown us that there's so much opportunity in terms of revenue in the surrounding uh, uh, areas of the uh, of the hotels. Now, uh, we've obviously experienced. Uh, uh, revenge travel, uh, luxury travel boomed, and experience are all up for grabs. And what we understand there's, is, is coming up now is there is a massive change on, when you put the guests in the center of the hotel and take the room and just becomes one more revenue stream for the hotel. So 
from from that perspective, uh, uh, we have what we call hotel quality index, which is kind of the first lens, which is very apparent on the consumer. And uh, do I am I paying the right price for that uh, room? Am I selling at the right price uh, versus my comp set and so on? So HQI uh, 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 takes that approach, and we have four pillars, which is uh, uh, very interesting. So we take uh, objective quality, uh, customer segmentation, online reputation, and then we are adding hotel sustainability uh, as one of the uh, areas that that basically uh, guests look to make decisions. And uh, going still a bit about our vision, we really are working towards championing digitalization and really helping hotels to use solutions like you just seen uh, uh, this afternoon to really uh, retain revenue, generate revenue, and really uh, take revenue managers from uh, a place of this combination of value for money, sustainability, and digitalization to enable capturing uh, uh, revenue and profits in the property. So uh, I, uh, we have this vision where we have a, a very key and important task in the industry, which is trying to help hotels to uh, take revenue managers to this new discipline, which we think is profit management. Of course, we have there uh, a, a profit manager on, on the on, on the panel as well, which is uh, great. But uh, we believe that that's going to be the future of of uh, revenue management, and that's where we're working towards. Um, so, I think that, in this, as a summary, we really are working. I mean, we've got some very interesting uh, features, like for example, double segmentation, uh, and a lot of things we can discuss with you guys if you're interested in getting to know more about Beyond Price. But uh, like I mentioned, we've got. Uh, a big launch coming up in the next few days, and I just want to share with you our view on revenue management and the future of hospitality. So uh, uh, what, how it happens with us, uh, 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 when hotel comes on board, we do a bunch of workshops, we understand the uh, inputs and outputs from the hotels, identify all the opportunities of where to find profits. We do what we call a revenue audit as well, so we can find where are the opportunities for you to retain, generate uh, revenue throughout the, the guest journey. And then, therefore, we go into implementation. And that is basically me. Thank you. Have I got more time? Thank you, Alex. Uh, yeah, the time just ran, I understand. So I want to leave uh, space to the question. So who has uh, a question for, uh, for Alex? Maybe Daniel? Um, hi, Alex. Many thanks. Great approach. Um, just curious about one thing, talking about profitability requires great insights into group's business or mice business, uh, especially when it comes to the decision where you take group A or group B. So how, how, is, how is your product gonna help the hoteliers to, to make the decision with regards to group business? So we have a, a, a group group optimization a, a, a solution within the platform, but uh, uh, with I mean obviously that's a very uh, important part of the business, but uh, I think that uh, our approach is that that's just basically again one part of the business. We really want to look at it holistically from, you know, uh, uh, everything that you think about from the revenue generation that you do through guest messaging. Uh, through the engagement with guests, basically getting uh, guests to, for example, skip room cleaning and, uh, you know, uh, uh, retaining that revenue that's already yours. So so for us, the group business is very important. I think it's a, a, an issue that every single revenue management platform is trying to resolve. And because you need to have the input of the quotations to really have, you know, decent insight to give you proper uh, recommendations. Uh, I think that every other revenue expert will agree that that's basically a massive challenge. So we are trying to focus on how can we uh, look at the property uh, from A to Z and how can we uh, almost like burst the little bubbles of silos uh, within the organization and really uh, uh, find some find the position that has the mission critical of finding profitability regardless of where you are in the organization. You know, forget your, your marketing, operations, uh, sales. We really want to help hotels and to them uh, uh, to be able to actually find those profits and take it to the bottom line and, and really connect the revenue management with the reality of the properties. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Very interesting. I really like you talking about profitability in the today, of course. So next question, uh, maybe Par, do you not, do you have any question for Alex? Yeah, for sure. I have a lot actually, but uh, I have to be 
quick. Uh, thanks, Alex. Good presentation. Uh, for me, as having a team with maybe six, six, uh, five, six profit manager, so it's nice to hear that you think more people should go that way, and it, we think the same. Uh, I, I was thinking about the sustainable profitability. Uh, you showed it, and how can you explain more how you get the sustainability into the numbers? Because mm -hmm. In my way, sometimes I can get the feeling like uh, if you travel all over the world, you actually take a plane going half over the world. You always get the best discount because you come as a group, you take down the rates and you're pushing it. So I think sustainability compared to like uh, net rev par and to discuss the cost and the impact. Well, I want to hear more about, more about that. Uh, Perfect. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm currently at Focus Right in Arizona. And uh, I mean, a, a little thing that can have an impact on hotel profitability dramatically is, for example, the, the ditching of the single use plastic, you know, at the properties. So, you know, that is an example. Uh, you think about guest messaging and how you can potentially upsell and, uh, uh, you know, serve service from only make the booking with the hotel that also has a massive impact on profitability of the hotel. But when you go further and you think about like i mentioned for example revenue retention uh, let's say you are you're actually able to send a message to 90 percent or 190 percent of your guests will actually get a message saying hey would you like to change uh, a drink uh, 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 let's say you're ch changing your towels or your sheets for a drink you're literally getting uh, sometimes 10 percent of your rate which is already yours is in your books you could potentially retain that but if you don't have digitalization to actually achieve that first of all you can't retain the, the, the profits. Second, you can't engage the guests in what is not only profitable, but also sustainable. Because if you're basically not washing, not spending water, and basically uh, not having, for example, a uh, 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 waste of staff time and uh, a bunch of other things, it really has a massive impact on the profitability of the property. So when you think about it from our perspective, it's a lot more holistic and a lot more uh, uh, thorough than basically uh, looking at uh, one little piece. So we go to a revenue audit with hotels. We understand everything that you do all the way from, you know, are you using any sustainable solutions with, for power, for example, or are you not? And then we, 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 we pinpoint and paint a picture of where you are today and what you could, what you could achieve with the profitability uh, hotel index that we have. So we have a profitability index for every single hotel and we can look at into a uh, deep dive in each one of the uh, areas and tell you, you've got a 50% possibility to uh, optimize revenue generation or revenue retention and et cetera. So that's how we go about okay, it. Okay, that's, that's really good. So basically you say that the basics that we already, all of us doing, put up the numbers, don't throw your towel, use it again, things that you do it yes. in a more, but you're not doing anything about the customer. So it's not like you give the customer that comes with a train 5% discount and you have to get a punishment if you take the plane there to this island. Actually, Our island probably not good with the, yeah. With the plane. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yes. So we are working, uh, this is kind of a new announcement as well. We're working with a company called Bioscore and we're working towards building what we call Hotel Sustainability Index. And that Hotel Sustainability Index in our vision, it's going to be a, a, a consumer facing, a, a, a B2C uh, index that people are going to look and decide how they're going to make their bookings. I mean, today at Focus Right, you know, booking uh, is launching something with a company called Choose, uh, talking about how they do carbon of printing. But for us, uh, I think the hotel quality, index, uh, hotel sustainability index is something way bigger and uh, much broader. And I think that it is uh, something that we are involving a lot of brands to build this, uh, along with a lot, a, lot, a lot of other partners. And I think that's what's going to happen. So there's definitely a, 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 B, a B2C approach and uh, 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 an exposure to the customer as to what you are doing. So every customer that comes on board of Beyond Price does this uh, uh, sustainability uh, audit and we show you where you are. If you can be certified, fantastic. If you cannot be certified because you've got less than 65% of the requirements, then you, you pay a little extra fee and then they take you how, what you need to do to get certified. So uh, uh, we're literally taking it very seriously. We're part of the Global Compact and we believe that there's only one way forward, and I think this is uh, this is the way uh, being sustainably profitable. Amazing, thank you. Wow, that, that was a really impressive, and I think we could uh, talk for hours, but uh, yeah, we are running out of time. I just want to give uh, maybe time for uh, for an extra question, but uh, please stay in one minute. So, Roxanne, do you have any? Maybe just in case you have, of course. Um. 
Yes, yeah, just one quick question. Who do you integrate with from, so this is more technical, what PMS booking engines do you work we, with? We, we work with uh, uh, most of the top uh, uh, tech stack in the world. So we work anything from, you know, uh, and there's over 55 uh, PMSs we work with. And uh, uh, if, we, if you're a, a group that has, a, let's say, 20, 30 properties and you have a PMS we don't integrate with, we'll also do the integration without a problem at all. So uh, integrations is not a barrier. We have a bunch of them. We're working. Uh, we recently just won Barcelo Hotels, which is an international uh, uh, Spanish hotel brand. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, hotel chains coming our way uh, uh, because I think they're aligned with our vision. They're, everybody's, I, I think, is working towards what we're trying to work, which is literally building a sustainable, profitable future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Wow, this this was really, and thanks the judges, of course, for asking the questions. This was really a very, uh, another great session. Right, Christina, do you agree that we really enjoyed it? And uh, yeah, I just want to thank you again and uh, say all of you, just stay tuned uh, with Beyond Price because they have many news and announcements. So thank you, Alex, for being with us. Now we go to the next pitch and uh, let's have a look at the clip to find out who uh, will pitch. Hello, Pier Giorgio. I'm happy uh, to have you here. Can you hear us? Hello, How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. And thank you again to you and to Enzo for inviting me. Thank you uh, to you for uh, join on, uh, joining us and uh, it's such a privilege. We are very happy and uh, we are uh, here to listen to you. So please uh, just share your screen and uh, you can start with your pitch and uh, everybody can find out more about Blasness. Just a few seconds now to, uh, you see my screen? to share. Yes, perfectly. So the platform is yours. So let's go. I will spend a couple of seconds to explain maybe who is Blastness. It's, in, it's one of our first international shows. And Blastness is an Italian company that helps independent hotels by offering technology and consultancy to increase direct bookings and revenues. So which are the two main missions of Blastness? First, developing the direct bookings in order to reduce the intermediation costs Second, optimizing revenue management to maximize operating margins on room revenue. Let's see a few numbers that maybe can tell you something more about us. We've been operating in Italy for more than 18 years, and now we are ready to go global. Today, we are a team of over 100 professionals, and in our portfolio, there are almost 1,000 hotels. We are the number provider in Italy for booking engine and revenue management system in the luxury hotel market. And we have the biggest independent revenue management team in Italy with over 25 professionals. Since 2017, we are also a Google strategic partner with over 75 million euros of converted direct reservation targeted in 2022. From uh, the over the 10 year long work done in Blastness in the revenue management field, we developed a new and more modern way of approaching the discipline of revenue management. And we've named it Web Revenue Management. The Web Revenue Management is an extension of the traditional discipline of revenue management, which aims not only to maximize other revenues, but also to optimize commission costs. The web revenue management activity involves, uh, involves actively all the purchasing phases of the customer journey, arriving to the end of the purchase. The goal of a modern web revenue manager shifts from maximizing rev bar to maximize revenues net of commission costs. And this can happen by optimizing not only occupancy and average daily rate, but also the distribution mix, which is the fundamental lever to disintermediate and which is mainly impacted by the sales strategy put in place by the revenue manager. To implement the web revenue management model, a revenue manager must design a wider and cost department strategy 
in order to achieve an extended goal, that is to maximize revenues net of commission. To achieve this extended goal, the web revenue manager must therefore equip himself with new tools that allow him to manage the sales in a modality that I will call dual and parallel, both on direct and indirect sales channel. In the context of web revenue management, the Blastness RMS is an hybrid facilitator that allows hotels to define risk strategy rules based on business variables, receive automatic data-driven suggestion from Sibilla, our artificial intelligence algorithm, define pricing strategies for direct versus indirect bookings, and indeed working in a hybrid modality, combining actions suggested by the business rules with automated suggestion from Sibilla and manual overrides on specific dates. The Blastness Intelligence module, included in our Blastness RMS, also provides other fundamental tools to achieve the web revenue management target, as the online sales trend with focus on direct versus indirect performance, a distribution health module to analyze the strategic distribution positioning, and also a very important thing, according to me, the direct versus indirect budget management. Indeed, we have other relevant market information as the market demand, the event calendar, and the competitive market gravity. The real challenge today for us is not to retrieve a lot of data, but to transform them from data into information and then from information into actions that can be easily conveyed in the systems without losing the control. All the information we saw before are gathered by Sibilla. They use artificial intelligence algorithms to determine the estimated occupancy per date and the suggested full data-driven optimal rate changes. The application of web, of web revenue management boosted by the technological tools that support us in applying and managing the strategies led us to achieve uh, very good results during 2022. Here we can see the result that we have on a panel of over 900 hotels compared to the revenues of 2019. And uh, where OTA revenues increased by uh, 23%, we can see, we uh, saw this incredible data that the direct booking increased on average by over 114%. And this result was also boosted by the Google channels, but we will see next week and we will talk more deeply about this topic in the next episode. So I hope that the pitch was interesting. By the way, it was our first international pitch. So I thank again Federica and Enzo. And uh, I hope that I was able to add a bit of flavor to the revenue management talk and also a bit a slightly different point of view. Wow, Per Giorgio, you were exactly on time. Very good, uh, very well done. And that was really interesting. I know that our judges and also the audience has uh, have many, many questions. So just want to leave the word to you. Uh, so who wants to make a question? Yeah, I can start again, Fantastic. again maybe. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you, Mar, by the way. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. I'm calling from a really dark uh, Oslo. It's actually dark basically <laughs> all day around at the moment. Um, Two questions. You said that you work with uh, independent hotels. Uh, yes. I just bought my uh, small uh, 250 rooms hotels, let's say Via Reggio in Italy. Uh, and you said like, we have an occupancy of 50%. How could you help us to optimize the commission? Because basically we never sold out. We actually, our rates are high, but we want to be shown on the market. You, you show the numbers now. It was up 23% uh, for the OTAs and 140% on the web page. But yeah, that's good for me, but I still have 50% of my rooms to sell. Uh, I just want to hear what, what you think about that because as the market looks at the moment, uh, we are not filling the hotels as we did before. Uh, maybe some exceptions, but how can you help me if, to like save commission, but I still want to have sell the last 50% of my beautiful hotel in Via Reggio. 
Yes, yes, yes. It's a very good question. And actually, uh, it uh, helps me also to explain it better because obviously it's not very easy in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. But it's a topic that uh, I, I, I like to, to challenge. And uh, actually, uh, may, many of you don't know about my previous experience. I was working for a long time in, uh, in revenue management before in, that li- in the airlines at the beginning of my career and then the, in, in hotels. Then after switch it to plusness, and I often say that um, if I see a me 15 years ago, uh, I obviously see a good revenue manager. I think I was talented. I, I love doing it. I still love it. I still love it. But uh, if I think of my hotel that was doing 10 million euro of revenues and doing 100 thousand euros of direct bookings, today I can say that mo- uh, most of the faults were mine. And what, I, what is my, let's say, provocatory uh, answer is that uh, one thing doesn't exclude the other, but revenue management can exclude direct booking because I think it's, everything is a matter also of targets. My target was RevPart. So I actually was obsessed by RevPart and I still obsessed by RevPart. Uh, I was managing a 400 rooms hotel that had, that when I started, had had uh, 43% occupancy. So I totally understand what you're talking about. And obviously, my point is increasing the rev part. The other thing that I want to uh, that I want to state is that anyway, the revenue manager has a big power. Yeah. Power is that he's at the end of the of the funnel, and uh, he has a responsibility uh, of creating a selling strategy that, at the same time, sees at rev part, but also sees as uh, the direct bookings uh, as a fundamental part of its target. For that reason, I was talking that the focus should stay on net ref part and on how I manage the distributional part. They have to be part of my task and also my budget. So this means that I have to build all my strategy thinking also of direct versus indirect. And uh, this is something that is based on strategy that obviously I have to bring home, bring a maximization both of ref part, but ref part consider also the commission cost. Yeah, good. I, exactly what I wanted you to say, that you, sh- you should never stop focusing on your direct bookings, even though if you see you can find something else out there, because yeah. it will bite you back uh, if you continue year after year and doing the same. Thank you. And totally, and now it, uh, that is the funny thing, because I had the opportunity here, and maybe we'll talk next time, so I don't, I don't steal too, many, too much time, and I would like to receive other questions, but this, this thing arises to me when I started also managing the other part, which was, was marketing. And as Blastness, I spent uh, several million euros in marketing, and I feel the responsibility of not converting the money into reservation. So is that the reason that brought me in the years to think we have to make every cent spent in marketing worth. And you do it if you are manage, you manage to make efficient the return investment and the revenue manager plays a key role in this. I'm convinced that revenue management is a very powerful um, subject, but also it can be also dangerous. So you have to manage it from a full perspective and you have to, uh, let's say, guide the sales and that is also the distribution process. And I think, uh, Pier Giorgio, I think it's also about giving visibility uh, uh, to your revenue strategy in the direct channel. Because I think totally. we rely so heavily on the booking engine. That's where we invest all of our time. But as you bring marketing into this, I think it's, you know, we need to shift more towards um, fusing marketing with revenue to work together. And, and, and feed each other with insights. So marketing knows what uh, revenue is actually focusing on, what's the priority for, for revenue and where inventory is at so that they can actually channel a lot of their energy to meet those, uh, those uh, revenue priorities. So bringing them together will be is obviously um, um, critical, right, to be able to, to continue driving that, that trend upward on the drag bookings. Yeah, I totally agree. And sometimes I like to say that the revenue manager has the power to empower the marketing, but also to destroy it. So we have to pay <laughs> a big attention. And obviously, the good thing is to empower what my colleagues put in place. 
what wise words, uh, Pier Giorgio, really. I think we could listen to you for hours, to all of you. And, I uh, would recommend yeah. you, but if you want to connect, we can talk about it for a long time. <laughs> we, did it, we did it already, I think, a couple of days ago <laughs> together. But, yeah, and I just want to, yeah, to, to give time to, to make a last question, maybe quickly. So, Daniel, maybe if you have any question uh, to Pier Giorgio, we have the one minute, please, uh, or... Um, Try to stay short, but uh, let's go with another question. It's a, it's a very easy question. So many thanks for the for the really uh, sharp approach uh, your product is putting into place. Uh, I, I've seen on your on your slides that you're including market data into 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 your system. So just let me let us know which market data are you including, and is this market data having an impact on your pricing algorithm? Yes, let's say also there was a, a nice quote. Uh, let's like, I would say I'm a revenue, who, who starts as a revenue manager will always be a revenue manager. And the fourth rule of revenue manager, more information you have, the better it is. So uh, I'm very thirsty about data. So we both buy some buy data, but we also get it all around. And uh, also the important thing for me is to transform data into information and into action. Because many times we also get the paralysis. Uh, at the moment, uh, well, the, let's say the market data that we put inside can be classified in a few categories. One is uh, everything about price. So for me, it's very important the trend of price on the single data. The other part is connected to the demand. So actually, I will, I will make it synthetic, uh, the, let's say, the, um, the numbers of rules still available for a certain date on your relevant, let's say, market. I, I will not call it square. I will call it submarket. Uh, on the other side, there's all uh, a thing that we call um, the demand from the request. We have data about people that are looking to book, still not booking, with a kind of, let's say, that one that comes a little bit before booking, so makes you understand the trends a little bit before. And for last part, not least, uh, all the event data. So knowing if you have relevant events that can impact both on the international market, but also on the local market. We have also this kind of, of um, things. And these are, let's say, the four big uh, places, the sources of data, family sources of data. Thank you. Thank you, Pier Giorgio. And uh, as somebody very famous said, uh, without data, we are just another person with an opinion. So <laughs> that's. Uh... I will see this quote. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing uh, your uh, your company, what you're doing, and for uh, every anybody who has any question uh, to about Blastness or to Pier Giorgio, please contact him. Uh, he will be very glad to he and his staff, of course, his team to to answer all your question so now the time uh, is um, yeah is over and uh, we need to go to the to the next speech thank you for Georgia again let's find out thank you the, the thank you everybody thank you and uh, let's see the clip now and uh, leave the word to thank you All right, well, welcome back. Uh, this time we have Geo Analytics on board. I think to, uh, we talk a lot about maximizing revenue, maximizing profit. I think in order for us to be able to get there, we need to have a pretty good view and understanding of the business um, and, and where really opportunities sit, get a pretty good pulse, right, of that. And how can we really unpick and uncover some of those opportunities? And for that, a lot of hotels look to us, uh, um, hotel uh, business analytics. And today with us, we have uh, Vasilis Siropoulos. Welcome, Vasilis. How are you? Thank you. I'm uh, very well. Thanks for having me. I see some old friends and some new friends. Indeed. We're all, uh, we all know each other very well, and we all find it very difficult to limit, to, to limit the amount of information we want to share on this show. But everything's sort of very timed, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be... Uh, uh, we very much look forward to finding out more about uh, what your analytics has in store for us today. So over to you. Thank you. Okay, let's get going. Let me share my screen. 
All right, are we on? We are. All right, excellent. Um, so it, it wouldn't be news for anyone to say that one of the major problems that we have in hospitality is that we have a lot of different systems. And with today's uh, digitalization, we have even more. Furthermore, all these systems, they generate a lot of data, whether it's internal data or external data sources. Um, and all of that data is kind of sitting in different places. And we have these uh, infamous uh, silos that, uh, that we all talk about. So it takes us quite a lengthy, uh, it takes a long time and it's a lengthy process to put it all together into one place. And actually the name of the game, and we talked about it this a little bit today, is how to make the most profitable uh, decisions. And we can see from the picture that sometimes the data is pointing us in different directions. Now, on top of that, hospitality has changed in the last uh, two or, or if I can say almost three years now. And uh, we've said that too, it's a bright future for hospitality, uh, at least I believe so. Uh, but there's also a little bit of a storm out there as well. So not everything is perfect you know, on the horizon. And that storm is coming, uh, let's say, in the form of inflation pretty much everywhere. So whether it's uh, energy costs, whether it's uh, staff costs, uh, I mean, we have also issues not having staff in hotels, uh, whether it's food costs or here down on the left, uh, credit card fees. And of course, um, uh, distribution costs as well, which uh, has been something that we haven't focused enough uh, over, the, over the years. Now, all of that is really, really a lot of data. And sometimes it's like kind of staring at uh, the night sky and seeing all these sort of stars and try to make out a constellation and trying to draw the lines across all these, um, all these def different data points. So what do we need? Well, we need the data platform. Uh, we need a place where all the data can actually come in one place. So that's what we are. We are the hotel data analytics and visualization platform. And our mission is, or I can say current mission, is to empower hotel commercial teams to understand their business, but also to understand also which uh, are the most profitable uh, customers for them. And now, while we start to empower the commercial uh, team, actually, we've taken a step forward. So uh, our first pillar is the customer and the commercial, but there's also other people in hotels with whom revenue needs to collaborate. That is finance, that is food and beverage, and last but not least, we also have external data sources that we all need to connect into uh, one, one place and add a little bit of intelligence on top to take better uh, decisions. So that's what we are. We are a data platform for hospitality with a strong aspect on data uh, visualization and also uh, working on uh, making that platform also intelligent. Now, We've been building analytics for quite some years, and you can take different levels uh, or different uh, uh, steps of how you're going to build these analytics and what are you trying to achieve. And so this is a model that we kind of think about uh, here in the company, which is um, as a first step, you can say, hey, let's do the old things that we are doing. Let's do them a little bit better than we used to do before, or let's innovate. Let's do new things or let's try and push uh, the limits and try to disrupt and think in completely different ways, which actually would render what we did before uh, obsolete. So we are developing analytics across these three different levels of steps, I would say. Now, the first one uh, to iterate, now you're not dealing with Excel anymore or you're not dealing with an old fashioned user interface, you're dealing with a rich analytics dashboard that allows you to personalize the information from everyone in the organization. Um, on top of that, uh, what you really want is you want to take decisions pretty fast. You don't want to run a report and then come back, have coffee, have lunch, and then come back and see the results. So you really want to be able to drill into your data, understand everything that is happening uh, with a few clicks. And then the last one is you want to have data in context. And this is something that's very important for us, which means it's okay, you know, any company can show you what's your booking pace, your, what's your pickup, these are not difficult things to do, but you want to start layering some extra information 
to get a little bit more deep uh, into the data. So that's we think is, is the first step of iteration. The second one is you want to start innovating or starting adding extra layers to it. So, and one of the things that a few panelists mentioned uh, is that we need to go from being inventory centric to being customer centric. So that means that we need to start really getting closer to the customer and allocating all the data at the customer level. The second one is we believe that we should go move away or not rather add to room revenue, also add the total revenue component and add all the spend at that customer level. So in other words, understand which are the customers that have a higher propensity to spend in our hotels. And then last, uh, but not least, I would say, is to go from revenue to profit. So that means allocating all distribution costs, all acquisition costs, and really ensure that we boil all the data down to net revenue. But I think we need to go a step further as well, which is really looking at our operational costs as well, and somehow re-engineer the profit and loss around the customer, which is uh, something that we're actively working on. And then the last one, which is a little bit a hint to what's coming up in the, the future, um, which is there's different ways to empower people with analytics and different people have different needs. We always think about us sitting behind the screen and sort of consuming analytics. Uh, but I will just give a hint um, that there's different ways of how we can empower people in the organization across the whole organization. The second one is, uh, as I was saying, uh, we've taken quite some steps in uh, making the application smart, which means that we have uh, AI, we call her Cassandra, and AI has different, uh, uh, this AI has different skills, which help, for instance, with profile deduplicating, cancellation propensity, um, and, and some other predictions that we're working. And then the last one is, and that's something also we think about, how can we de devise new KPIs that allow us to think in a different way? How can we look at KPIs per square meter? How do we empower hotels to actually think in a different way to repurpose perhaps some of the spaces that, uh, that they have, which is something that we learned throughout the pandemic. So that's what we are. Uh, we are Julio, and uh, our mission is to connect uh, all the data dots in uh, hospitality. Very impressive, Vasilis. I think you we bring it. You're bringing it all together, and I think everyone sitting there and watching, thinking. Is this really happening? So um, congratulations and great pitch. Um, we're going to take some questions now because everyone seems very surprised about some of the things we've seen there. Um, so why don't we just go to maybe Shumi to start with? Sure, yes. Um, so I have a question. Um, so obviously, you know, getting to a profitable uh, I suppose uh, forecast is uh, and profitable outlook is 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 uh, critical for us. But uh, the one thing I have to ask about is um, the data itself, because you say that you're a, an analytical and a visualization platform. What mm -hmm. about the technical side of things? Because, for example, within uh, the PMS, uh, in order to identify a uh, booking that is uh, delivered by an OTA via either a net rate or a gross rate, you would need to go to the source code within the PMS. And then, you know, similarly, you, you know, you have other costs and so on that, uh, you know, uh, you know, how do you actually do that? Do you do the extraction from the PMS and do you remap the PMS so that uh, uh, the source code in the PMS accurately reflects whether it's a net rate or a commissionable rate? Or are you reliant on us providing you with the clean data and you're just going to analyze it and visualize it? Um, do I have two days to answer that one? No, I'm joking. Uh, this, is a, <laughs> this is probably the most important question, which is, um, uh, you know, you would think that we'd spend our time to build beautiful visualizations, and actually that's not what we do. This is a small part. The biggest part is actually cleaning all the data and making sure that it can kind of feed the engine, right? So yeah. to your point, often the PMS data is not really good. I mean, we've seen many different levels of, of, of data. Uh, so indeed, you, you have to, in the plot, let me answer it in two ways. Uh, the first way is yes, we will remap all the data usually in our platform. 
so we look at and say, okay, you know, how do we want to map, you know, channel segments, rate codes, maybe companies, agencies, whatever the different dimensions are on the booking, right? So, so we need to do quite some cleaning data. Uh, some cleaning uh, uh, of, uh, of, of the data. And then there is uh, different things that you might want to think about, which is you, you mentioned gross rates and you mentioned net rates. If you don't equalize this, you're not looking at the right information. Uh, so you need to think, how can I identify this, equalize it, so I'm comparing apples with apples and not apples with another fruit. Uh, that's, I try to make the very short answer. I know that it doesn't answer everything you ask. It's, 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 it's quite a complex question. All okay, right. Okay. Um, uh, Federica, one more question, if we may, and it will be short, but hopefully. Um, Danielle, uh, you know, coming from a, a world of total revenue management and total profit optimization, such as the Atlantis, what matters to you, um, uh, you know, when it comes to analytics? Yeah, so I think the uh, the picture whereby you had all the systems and the silos, it's, it's the one I would like to explore a little bit more. I think uh, the the issue of my life here, it, it has been like the, the integration of the systems. And uh, um, so could you like, uh, would you like to uh, elaborate a little bit more and... Uh, I would like really to understand how you integrate the POS, PMS, and uh, and how you elaborate all the data together, and whether your system is also able to to pull out menu engineering uh, recommendations and tables, and whether your system is also a little bit flexible in, uh, in actually creating personalizing tables uh, or um, reports directly from the final user without getting back to you all the time and asking for more? Yeah, so let me answer the se second question first, which is uh, that you don't want to come to us to, let's say, uh, create visualizations all the time. So uh, our vision is to be some sort of tableau for hospitality without needing a PhD to use it. That, that's, that's what we're sort of trying to create. But our platform is coming in two different ways, which means one is the full platform with a visualization engine. The other one is what we call the data platform, which we would do only the data engineering part and we would expose the data to you so that you could build something on top of that. So that's kind of the, let's say the easy uh, uh, sort of quick answer to the second question. Uh, the first question about the integrations, um, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here to tell you that it's a piece of cake to write integrations in hospitality. I'd be lying. Nobody would believe me. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the hardest thing that we're going through in hospitality. We have the same challenges as everyone else. Um, but we are the most connected analytics platform from a range of integrations, not only PMS, but also other data sources. So we have a, we think that we have an advantage is sort of in understanding the complexities of different forms of data, so to speak. Uh, we haven't solved everything, but you know that's the path that, that we're on to, I would say. Uh, again, a sh sh really short answer on it. And we don't do manual engineering yet. Thank you. But stay tuned, uh, Daniela, because you'll find someone who does in just a bit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very, very much. That was super insightful. We all enjoyed this session. Uh, we all enjoyed all the sessions. And um, let's um, let's see who um, who we're going to welcome next uh, in the category of revenue maximization. Uh, bye bye. Good. All right, all right. Well, next we have Wei Visa. And um, uh, I think hotels are such a complex business mix. And uh, there's so much complexity around handling that and handling the commercial strategy, especially if you are a resort and you're located somewhere where you need to actually take a flight. So you rely heavily on tour operators bringing business into your islands. And for that, we have today with us, Irene Guillarte. Bienvenida, welcome. How are you today? <laughs> Good morning, Christina. Thank you. I'm really well, and you? Thank you. Very well, very well. Uh, Irene, uh, uh, I think she's dialing uh, from Ibiza. Is that where you're yeah. at? 
right. and located in Ibiza. And the weather is really nice today, 23 degrees, then it's really nice here, the weather. Thank you for making us all uh, very jealous. <laughs> well, we're super delighted to have you. Thank you so much. Um, you are very welcome to start your pitch in just a few moments. Okay, thank you very much, Christina. Then I'm going to share my screen. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, then it's really nice to be here for me. My name is Irene and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Wavisa. And you wonder what Wavisa is? Wavisa is the company that launched the market, the RMS in the world, developed by and for vacation and hoteliers. As a vacation and hotelier for many years, and also a, as an expert in implementation of RMS in hotels, I have always ask myself why there are no RMS for vacational hotels. All systems cover my segment, corporate segment, transient segment, but what about the tour operator segment? Does it not give money to hoteliers? Well, the answer is really clear. It gives a lot of money and you have to be able to work and optimize it. And of course, I'm not talking about the tradition, the connected tour operator, I'm talking about the traditional one. And that is why Wavy got born, to help the hoteliers to make each and every one of his channel profitable. Always, of course, giving the possibility to have advantages for his direct channel or strategic channels, but without losing sight of the bigger X in the basket. And the vacational hotels, sorry, but the bigger X are the tour operators. Then, what makes the RMS WaveCat unique? First one, you will manage your online and offline channels in the same platform. Forgot to have an Excel to control the sales of the tour operators, to introduce offers, to control your clothes, your opens, your allotment. In WaveCat, you can do all the actions through the same platform and have the control of your offline channels as you have in your online channels, and very important, in real time. Also, we have the revenue per room type. Of course, traditional, everybody say, I do revenue per room type. But the reality is there are no time to do it. You cannot do an analysis per room type, do your closing, put a lot in your channel manager, in the extra net of the tour operators, send emails to the tour operators, send the offers, prepare different reports, because unfortunately, the day has 24 hours, no 85 hours. That is a way we can give you recommendations per room type. That way you can be focused on the room types and days that the system is recommended you. Also, we have the revenue per ball. The recommendations by ball are one of the diamonds in WaveCut. Unfortunately, supplements are stipulated per season that are usually static, not for lack of desires, but for lack of time. The revenue that is made in the board is usually when the maximum capacity that the hotel can manage in the restaurant is reached, sales are close. But what if we could receive recommendations for each day for the different boards and only increase or decrease what really, really sells or not sells? It seems very simple, but how many of you do it dynamically? But of course, I'm not talking about different supplements per season, please. I'm talking about doing revenue in the board. And the next one, I think one of my favorites one is revenue per person. For me, the philosopher stone of the hotels is here. Making revenue per person is what has traditionally been done in hotels, but always statically, not dynamically. Imagine manage your discounts and supplements per person by multiple factors, travel window, booking window, occupancy of the hotel, occupancy of the board, occupancy of the room type, different, um, different, for different channels and everything automatically. The growth of your revenue can be unbelievable, I promise you. And the last one, but of course, my favorite one is the, automati the automation. The war, good war, we boast of using it, but if we do a survey, how many hoteliers 
automate all the process that allow them to automate the machines and leave the main task of them to humans, the task of people is not to chop data, is guide the machines, set the goals, define the strategy, and monitor its scope. Automating all processes is feasible, and the question is, why don't we do it? Because normally we have to buy five, 10, or 12 tools to cover all your needs. And at the management and cost level, it gets out of hand. What would happen if I told you that in Wavicat you can automate absolutely everything you want to do it with your prices, with your allotment, with your clothes, with your minimum length of stay per channel, per rate, per board, per room type, for each moment of sale and each time of purchase is one of the stars of Wavicat and what our customer like the most. But for me, there are one key factor in, in WaveyCat that makes everything possible. Our team. At WaveySA, all the commercial team and some of the uh, engineering comes from vacational hotels. We understand your needs because we have experienced them and no one can make hits better than a woman who hears them every day. I would like to say you thank you very much. Well, I have problems with my presentation. Here is my contact. And then thank you very much. Thank you, Irene. That was wonderful and uh, very insightful. I think it made us all think about all the things that we think we can't do today, but uh, uh, obviously, it's quite apparent where Visa can help us with. So uh, maybe just uh, taking a couple of questions from our judge panel here uh, with us. Uh, who would like to go first? I'll go first. This is uh, sort of taking me back to quite a few years ago in my career. And I'm having flashbacks because I remember how difficult it was to manage allocations um, and allotments uh, with the, the two operators. Can you just explain a little bit more how this is done? Of course, we connect with real time with the PMS and of course with real time with the channel managers. And in WebCat, we have a part called it allotment rules. And in allotment rules, you can set up high amount of rules to say for that we booking window, in that travel window, for that room type, in that board, in that rate, I would like to put, I don't know, five rooms in that channel. Then the system is going to put automatically when the occupancy is detected in that travel window and in that booking window then you set up your different rules and the system is going to do it alone in real time because we are connected with PMS in real time. Excellent. Um, Christopher, tell us what's important to you um, in your area of expertise and particularly how you manage various type of businesses uh, as a and some of your consulting engagements. Uh, what, any questions for Irene, uh, particularly in, in the areas where you have resorts management? You are on mute, Christopher. So I wasn't scheduled for that one, but uh, I'll give it a go. No, I think it's um, I think it's similar around managing allocations, etc., and, and how we optimize our distribution without limiting it as much as we can. Um, often leaving inventory in partners with partners who aren't going to use it and you get it back very late on. So I think the, the ability to distribute that allocation more in a more balanced approach, I would think makes good sense. Excellent. And the last question, perhaps we could go over to Danielle. Any question from your side, Danielle? Danielle Frey, because we do have two Daniels with us today. <laughs> Yeah, you're on mute, Daniel. Yeah, always a mute as it's like the first time I'm using a video call. Um, so, um, with regards to 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 channel pricing and to um, to channel rules, are you have something like that in place in your system? Yeah, sure. We have channel rules and. 
just not just online, include offline part, the both. And we are connected with the true operators directly. We have both. Excellent. One more question. I think we've got very, very crisp questions and very crisp answer. One from Daniele Karai this time. Hi, Irene. So Hi, my Daniele. question is, so the recommendations go back to the CRS. This means that your partners, they all need to be connected? No, I connect directly. Directly. How, okay, so how do you distribute that to them? To the, so you're, you are talking about the tour operators? Yes. Yes, normally there are different, we have a channel manager that connect with the tour operators directly then not is not our channel manager, but we have an agreement with one channel manager and then we can send to the extranets. We connect like a, channel, a normal channel with a code when we sign the contract and then we send the actions to the channel and the channel distribute to the true operators. The static ones, of course, eh? I'm not talking about the, the, the dynamic ones. And also there are true operators that the system is going to generate an email to send to the these two operators, you can introduce directly the email in the platform, and then the system is going to generate the action in form, in form of email. All right, thank you. So basically, you are using the channel manager as a bridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Great, great. All right, thanks, Irene. So we are thank almost you. at the end, guys. Uh, thank you, Irene, for joining us, and uh, let's welcome the last, uh, the last pitch which is going to be very interesting because finally we are going to understand more about how to yell tables at restaurants. Thank you, Irene. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Javier Espinosa, CEO and founder of Dynamite. Welcome on board. How are you? Hi. Good afternoon. I'm good afternoon. Uh, great, great to be here. It's a pleasure. So we have been watching a lot of uh, BI and RMS for uh, rooms, accommodations. Now we need to understand more how to optimize revenue for restaurants. And this uh, is going to be really interesting. This is going to be actually also the last pitch. I leave the word to you. You can share the screen and, and get your pitch up. OK, thank you so much. And so, okay. <clears throat> so let's get ready so we can do also up to three questions at the end of this pitch because it's the last. OK, Christine, here we are. So you have to get the PowerPoint up. Yes, uh, you can start, man. OK, that's great. Thank you so much. All right. So first, let's look at the reality. And the reality is that today, total revenue management is like sex when you are a teenager. Everyone talks about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. But everyone thinks everybody else is doing it. Because we have been talking about total revenue management for many, many years. But today, the reality is that 70% of total revenue management by a hotel is coming from rooms. And there are many, many uh, platforms and uh, a lot of technologies and, and, and vendors and, uh, that actually uh, utilize their, their technology and their algorithms in the best way in order to optimize uh, this uh, room revenue uh, space, uh, such as uh, some examples are, of course, uh, Duero, Beyond Price, Ideas, Atomize, some of them. We have been listening to them during this uh, afternoon session, and they are uh, using cutting edge uh, technology uh, that basically uh, has uh, you know, no competition. Uh, but the remaining 30% of revenue that is called uh, or that we uh, like to call as other revenue uh, because it's everything that has nothing to do uh, with rooms uh, in the hotel industry uh, has uh, no or poor uh, technology to support a proper optimization and has not had it, uh, you know, in the last years, even though we have been talking about total revenue management. Uh, so what we do in Dynamite is we optimize other revenue to apply a total revenue management strategy for hotels. Starting with f &B, so starting with the restaurant space. Applying, in particular, two uh, levers. One, dynamic pricing, and second, smart menus. Uh, dynamic pricing is basically about uh, adapting the price of every dish uh, depending on the demand level in order to improve uh, profitability and product mix. And smart menus is all about adapting your digital menu at the restaurant, personalizing 
and making it dependent also on the demand level and of the and on the type of customer that you have in your uh, restaurant or in your FMB outlet again in order for customers to purchase what it's most important uh, for the restaurant to be sold. Uh, now, we have a clear product roadmap where we want to include in our platform a breakfast optimization, optimizing pricing for breakfast and dynamizing pricing for breakfast is crucial for hotels. The same for room service, where it comes as well to personalizing uh, the offer that we have in every room, depending on the customer and depending on the demand level. And then, and then also for restaurants, uh, we want to work on the delivery platforms. We want to optimize the delivery uh, channel uh, focusing on uh, restaurants. But really what we are doing today, uh, what we offer to those uh, uh, restaurants and hotels that are using our platforms, we offer an increase of 10 to 15% in profitability using our platform. And this has been tested and it's what we are getting in the customers that have been using our platforms in the past uh, approximately year and a half. Uh, this is an example from one premium outlet uh, located in the city center of Madrid after just uh, nine months uh, using uh, Dynamite. They went from a contribution margin per customer uh, of 11.7 euros up to a contribution margin per customer of 18 euros, of course, without impacting the demand at all of the restaurant. So this is pure uh, benefit and pure contribution margin going straight to the bottom line. That's 44K just thanks to the implementation of Dynamite in just nine months, which is, of course, huge. Who is working with us today? Uh, who are our customers? Uh, we are proud to say that uh, in the hotel space, uh, we are working with Radisson Hotels. We are working uh, with uh, Palladium. Uh, we are working uh, with the Smart Rental uh, a group with over uh, 10 properties. Uh, then on the restaurant space, uh, we are working with La Rumba Group, uh, with uh, Grupo La La La. They are both, they are both based in, in, in Spain, big restaurant uh, groups. And then with Grupo Arzabal, which was our first uh, customer back in 2020. Uh, but these are just some, some examples. And the best, uh, the best ones that can talk about uh, what Dynamit is and what it can bring to them is basically our customers and industry leaders. Uh, Gianni Di Fede, Senior Vice President of Revenue Management, BI and Distribution for Radisson, uh, says being able to control and centralize our F&B pricing thanks to a platform like Dynamit is a very important leap for us. Fernando Vives, Chief Commercial Officer of an Ace Hotel Group, the customer is ready. We need to counterfeit inflation and incremental cost. Dynamic pricing is the smartest solution. And then, of course, uh, we couldn't uh, avoid, you know, including some uh, testimonials from what was our first customer and the first believer on, a, on dynamic pricing uh, for F&B outlets uh, for us, which is Nacho Adorna, the CEO of Rupert Zabal, uh, which mentioned that their profitability had grown by 30% uh, thanks to uh, the implementation of our platform. And the best news is uh, you can try it for free. Uh, our platform is available for a free pilot but only for the doers. Uh, if you want to try our platform uh, for free during the first month, uh, you have to confirm your interest uh, before uh, the 15th of December. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your time and for the invite, of course. So we can try it for free also the food, Javier? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Test me sure we are on track. You know? <laughs> All right. Excellent, cool. excellent presentation, Javier. Um, and I think uh, it was all sitting, uh, I think it was always wishful thinking, a lot of the things that you said there for quite a few of us. And I'm sure uh, a few very interesting questions will come out of this session. Um, so, shall we start with Pierre? Do you have Mark, a question? I think the, yes. first, the first one, yeah. For sure. Hi, Xavier. Thank you for a good presentation. Uh, I have one question. Uh, I have actually two profit managers working for me, only with FMB uh, at the moment. Uh, and the same road as we all did with the, with the room revenue for, yeah, maybe 15, 20 years ago, we start getting older, is that it's a lot of bad data. Uh, when we when we get to these big machines of hotels that we have, when we should start working with F and B revenue and do like menu engineering things like that, we can we can see like a famous beer mark could be in the system in twenty five different ways. It could spell it with two L and one L and up and down. What's your point on that one? Because I think uh, what we could do with your system and things like that in our two hundred twenty five hotel is amazed, but 
our data is so pure in many ways. How did you sort it out with other companies? And is it a long way to start using the system because you need to do a lot of work on the back office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, thank you for the, for the question. Uh, and that's a, that's a great point. Now, um, the reality is that uh, the, the lack of consistency on how you input uh, the data, which happens to basically everyone, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's an issue when you want to consolidate the data, right? When you want to look at, at uh, reporting, for example, on an aggregated level, and you want to look at how many Cokes you sold at the global scale, scale right? For example. You have Coke with a K and a C in yeah, every right. different way. Yeah, true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, if you uh, are working at the hotel level or at the outlet uh, level, uh, usually, you know, unless it's very messy, but usually there's only one product uh, for, 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 every, for every item, right? Uh, and this is how our algorithm works. Basically, we work everything at an outlet level. Uh, and at an outlet level, it should be, <laughs> right? Yeah. Perfect, but thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to have somebody calling you <laughs> in some days. That's great. That's what we All like right. to hear. Shumi. Uh, sorry, let me, uh, let me close my... Uh, sorry, uh, give me just one second. Um, also, Par, um, regarding your question, we have a partnership, in case you are interested on in, you know, the consolidated thing, uh, we have a partnership with, a, with an artificial intelligence uh, and reporting platform uh, that could as well provide you know, that service of, you know, consolidating the, the information, just in case you're interested. We get nothing out of it. It's just a partnership that we can help you out with. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the analytics behind the dynamic pricing. So what are the variables um, that drive the pricing? You know, for example, you know, is it is it inventory? Is it time of day, seasonality? Um, do you do measure some kind of uh, elasticity of demand? Um, and if so, what's the time period of data that you take in order to, you know, drive a robust uh, um, uh, price decision upload? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Shumi, for your, for your question. So, um, to be honest, uh, you know, the, the different variables that are impacting pricing and how uh, we should uh, measure them and take them into account, it's, uh, it was a learning process for us because we were coming from the hotel industry, right? At the beginning, we knew nothing about restaurants. And the first thing that we learned was that the name of the hotel is entirely different. Uh, when you talk about uh, pricing for hotels, we are always talking about revenue management. It has not been until recently that we have started talking about uh, net revenue management and profit. But when it comes to restaurants, there is a huge element that you can impact when playing uh, with the menu and when optimizing product mix, right? So therefore, the name of the game is completely different and you need to look for profitability. How do you look for profitability? Well, there are many variables, right? The first one you need to take into account is, of course, price elasticity, the popularity of every dish, how they react to price changes. Uh, then you need to take into account the contribution margin for every item, uh, the stock in case you have it, because the reality is that many restaurants do not keep track of it. Uh, and then an element that is crucial for us and is the preparation speed. Because, for example, if your restaurant is uh, full of people or you are expecting to have the restaurant full of people, it would be very interesting to have your menu uh, only uh, showing dishes that are uh, fast to be, to be cooked, nice. right? Or at least to provide them better visibility, right? So that customers are uh, more willing to purchase those, those items to improve table rotation and to improve the efficiency mm -hmm. of the kitchen, right? So all those elements are taken into account into our algorithms. Uh, but we always say that we do it in a holistic approach. So, for example, at a certain stage, our algorithms may recommend that you uh, increase the price of the hamburger, maybe not to get more money out of the hamburger, but maybe because the customers that are buying the hamburger are not purchasing the steak. And maybe the steak has a better profitability than the hamburger, right? So sometimes, you know, our algorithms take into account the cannibalization between different items and they are going to suggest uh, price changes and menu changes that take that into account in order to optimize the profitability of the entire menu. Okay. Especially if you have the steak rare, so it doesn't take long to cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. That's very insightful. Thank you. Brilliant question, Shumi. Um, Roxanne, how about um, our second lady in the show today? 
Yes. So now I'm imagining all of these price changes for menus that are coming up and a lot of restaurants still have printed menus. Um, this obviously stops you from being able to change those prices as regularly or as you would say, for instance, your hotel rooms. Um, how are you doing that? Sort of how are you getting these prices in front of the guests? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, basically, you know, we have uh, our main way of, sh of showing the... Can you hear the... me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Roxanne, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello? We can hear you fine, Javier. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, the, the main way to show our menu, uh, it's uh, via QR code, right? For customers yes, to I can. see it. Thank you. Ah, okay, great. Uh, so the, the the way to show the the menu, uh, the main way is to show it with a QR code, right? With the uh, with the digital menu being shown on the on the on the cell phone from the customer, right? But then we have two, uh, let's say, backup uh, plans uh, in case uh, any in case a customer doesn't feel comfortable with that. On one hand, uh, many uh, restaurants that we are working with. Uh, they have tablets as a backup pl plan, again, in case a customer doesn't feel comfortable with the digital menu, right, uh, on, on their cell phone, uh, or in case they don't have Wi-Fi or internet connection or whatever, they can always use uh, the, this, kind, this uh, device. Uh, and then we have a second <laughs> backup plan, uh, which is that restaurants have the ability uh, from our platform to print straight away uh, the current menu, right? So if any customer uh, do not want the digital menu, uh, it neither in their cell phone, neither in tablet. Uh, the restaurant owner can go, click a button in our platform, and print a copy of, of, of the current menu with the prices that are uh, available at that moment. Fantastic. I, I have another question. The, the, it's just a curiosity. It could be comparable the lineup of uh, your menu dishes to the room type, right? That's the concept. Javier? I mean, so if I'm having uh, having uh, you know uh, oysters is the sweet, for example, and or if I'm getting the hamburger, is the executive kind of room type. <laughs> um, could be in a way, could be in a way, because in the end you have the customer sitting there, and you can influence on 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 what they are purchasing, right? The same way you are influencing, you, you can influence. On customer purchasing a suite, or you can influence influence on a customer purchasing a standard. Yeah, it could be sort of comparable in a way. Yeah, yeah. That's I think I think this is the way you can translate this RMS traditional from the room point of view to the you know tables and dishes and so on. Anyway, I was able to have a proper demo of your platform from uh, one of your uh, team member Alessio, and really impressed me. the The tool was really interesting. So. If anyone interested in restaurant uh, revenue maximization, I strongly suggest guys to get in touch with Javier and uh, and request a demo, and then uh, find out if the free trial is also available for the food cost. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Javier. Really glad to have you here today, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. All right, so we are at the end. Let's take on board Federica. We're here, Chris, um, Christina, Diego. It's done, eh, guys? Two hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, two hours. 10, 15 minutes delayed, but uh, <laughs> considering that all the products we saw was very interesting, we had some more extra questions, I think was fair. Uh, just a quick round and a feedback from uh, the judges, starting from Daniel. What was your experience? Daniel Frey. So I think really great way to present companies and to get the core of each presentation. A very, very sharp approach. So I really like it. Thank you very much for being part of this group. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Roxanne? What was your uh, experience? Roxanne? I think I think she might be having a bit of a... I, I don't know if my sound is lagging a bit, but um, yeah. No, no, we understand it's the end of the day. Maybe you was relaxing a little bit. 
<laughs> so what was your experience? I think you have some connectivity issue probably. I see you frozen again. Maybe we can move to the next, Daniele. Sure. Uh, I, I think overall it was all very interesting. Uh, I think that uh, you can definitely see what the new trends that they are coming up, everyone really focusing on net profits and no more on the top line, which I think this was uh, really the, the new thing about the pandemic, where everyone was really trying to, to scratch the bottom of the barrel and try to get the most out of uh, the, the, the few bookings that we had for a while. Um, I am mostly interested these days at total revenue, so definitely the, the presentation from Javier is, is the one that, uh, that I would like to understand a little bit more of, to be honest. But uh, I think um, also the sustainability piece was very interesting. Uh, and that's a big thing also that, uh, that in Atlantis, Dubai and general in Kirstner, we're really working on uh, at the moment. And uh, uh, we try to get uh, all sorts of certifications to, uh, to, to really be relevant. And, uh, and also our guests really do care about it. Uh, and especially in the luxury segment, ultra luxury segment, they really start looking at these kind of things. So it's definitely the way to go. Overall, very glad I have been part of this panel and I thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Daniele. Show me three words to describe the day. Um, insightful, uh, eye-opening and innovative. Fantastic. Thank you for your contribution. Great questions. Par, from your Dark Oslo. From my dark Oslo, yeah, um, I think it's more people than I. It's like we talk too much, so the time flies by. That's uh, funny. I think it was good, um, but for me, it's more. I'm trying to listen, write down things, uh, so I need to take another look at this. I think so. Probably I will look at the replay of this one tomorrow. No, I think it was nice, um, and I think it's it's so good to see how a presentation can pop up one question in my head, a totally different one in, for example, Daniel's head, that we listen to the same thing where we ask totally different things. And that's the good thing about being in a panel, to see that we, we listen to different things at the same presentation. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Christopher. What was yeah, your I really very much enjoyed it. Um, in line with Daniele's comment, uh, I thought Javier's conversation was probably the most I was unfamiliar with. I've been in revenue management for about 30 years. <laughs> I've kind of come across these systems quite a lot, but um, no, I thought it was very useful. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time for us all really to ask our questions, but there's no reason why we can't follow up directly with the salespeople or the operators, the owners. But thank you. Thank you for your... Mr. Being... Brian, nice to see you after all these years. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, so I thank you all the judge. I uh, really appreciate it. You can... Go and now relax and find out if you want to get in touch with this company, get a demo, free demo, free presentation, get deeper on, uh, on uh, find out more. Thank you again. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Goodbye, all. All right, so it's almost done, guys. Roxanne, you were the last, actually. You were not able to say mm -hmm. some words. No, She's gone. It's gone. Um. Sorry, Roxanne. <laughs> oh, guys, so before we end and wrap up, um, let me show again the agenda, just to keep in mind, guys, tomorrow is the second day. We post uh, in the comment space the LinkedIn uh, uh, page where you can subscribe. So let's look at the dates once again. Sixteen tomorrow, then twenty second is going to be for uh, the that um, twenty third operational and sustainability. Okay, Diego is here again. I was mainly with Diego. Uh, not in the back office, the stage, <laughs> in the back office, doing the dirty job. I I hope that Christina and Federica enjoyed. Christina, what was your experience? That was brilliant. Bring and um, surrounded by so many, so many professional people doing um, doing very well what they do um, in, around revenue maximization. Now, for me, it was very insightful to see how various angles can be actually brought into revenue maximization. 
you know, from operational asset management standpoint to more of the F and B and so revenue optimization, sustainability, such a key area. So absolutely uh, a pleasure to collaborate with all these um, great uh, tech innovators, as well as really thank our judges because ultimately we do this for um, for the hoteliers that are watching us, and we really want to be able to connect them with the latest innovation to help their uh, their lives and, and, and their day-to-day -day operation. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Lucina. Diego. So it's uh, it has been a, a, an amazing day, like the, the first edition. So I have enjoyed a lot seeing the sales speech. And also I would like to thank all the judges because we have worked with them uh, from some months ago. Uh, being a revenue manager and have the opportunity to be with that kind of uh, roles and that kind of profiles for me is a, a dream come true. So um, thank you very much for, for your time, for your, uh, your, uh, your, your event. I'm really glad to, to be part of an amazing job. Well done. Good. Fede. So well, the, it's a long day that's been and very interesting, you know, very nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. And uh, uh, I also want to thank everybody who followed us. There were many from all over the world. And uh, yeah, maybe I, I don't know if we also mentioned about our media partners already that uh, we want to thank as well. Um, that we have Smart Travel News uh, and uh, Haynes Marcoms, uh, our uh, media partner. So thank you and thanks uh, to the audience. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to tomorrow. Cool. So guys, stay tuned. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. Uh, Central European time, we go for distribution day. We will introduce a team four or five new company. Very interesting insight and uh, new judges a lot of questions and uh, actually guys so i see a lot of people still connected and uh, feel free guys to send and tag question in the comments to all the speakers if you had no chance to review the presentation the pitch so again you can tag them you can contact them through linkedin it's going to be easy you know just keep it up all right so looking forward for tomorrow and I wish you a great evening. And thanks again for staying with us. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. You don't want to talk, but there's a